another exciting day here at the Paris Air Show. We were celebrating companies who reinvent the sky. We are proud to be partnering with our next guest, founder and CEO, Blake Scholl of Boom Supersonic. Let's see what he has to say. Tell us more about Boom Supersonic and the ambition you have in the industry today. Absolutely. So I grew up in tech in a world where everything is getting faster and better. Our okay. cars, our computers, our phones, all getting better. But as we stand here at Le Bourget, we're literally at the 50th anniversary of Concorde's debut and we don't have it anymore. And I think it's crazy that if you want a supersonic airliner, you have to go to a museum rather than to an <laughs> airport. And uh, the world today is more connected and more global than ever has been. And so our ambition is to pick up where Concorde left off, to build a new generation supersonic airliner that's gonna be available to tens of millions of people and to do supersonic flight in a way that's environmentally and economically sustainable. And so since you mentioned that sustainability, so what now makes those conditions possible for a company to develop overture that you're working on. It's really exciting. We're at the crossroads really of two, uh, two intersecting trends. Uh, first off, there's been a massive increase in international travel. It's more than doubled since Concorde retired in 2003. And second, we've had 50 years of progress since Concorde's design in basic aerospace technology. We've gone uh, aluminum to carbon fiber. We've gone from wind tunnels to computer simulation. We've gone from afterburning turbojets to clean, efficient, quiet turbofans. And of course, we've gone from drafting paper to computer to design. And if you put all those things together, it enables a 75% reduction in cost okay. relative to Concorde, which means you could get from New York to London in three hours and 15 minutes for the same price you'd pay in business class for a lay flat bed. Do you think you have a, a great position on that competitive landscape going forward? Yeah, well, there are broadly three approaches you can take to supersonic that you okay. see players doing. There are some folks working on private jets, there's us working on commercial airliners, and there are some folks that are working on R&D for you know, hypersonic or all, you know, some boom shaping technology. It's really a generation out. Okay. And you know, we, uh, we like where we sit because it is the approach that enables high speed to be available to as many people as possible. And we're building something that we want our friends, our family, and our loved ones to be able to fly on. Some, you know, my kids have a grandpa who lives in Hong Kong and they rarely get to see him because the flight's 16 hours from Denver. And this is the kind of thing that brings humans closer together. It really changes how often you can see people in faraway places. Nice, nice. And so um, with it, I guess the last question that's on everybody's lips Blake, is um, when can we fly to Hong Kong quicker? So our, we're building our first airplane now, the XB-1. It's going to roll out this year and it'll be flying next year. Now that's a two-seat demonstrator. When it flies, we'll have demonstrated to the world that the technology for supersonic flight is here and it's ready and it's coming. Yep. After that, we'll be in a, uh, a development process for the full-scale airliner, which is largely about testing exhaustively to show that this is safe and reliable for routine use by tens of millions of people. Okay. And our target is to carry the first passengers in the mid-2020s. Excellent. So we're going to do as fast as we can but without skipping any stops. Great. Well, Blake, I really look forward to flying on that. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best. Thank you.